Welcome again, dear friends, to Through Different Eyes, a program that is dedicated to communicating God's understanding and God's ways of healing the broken heart. I'd like to address a very major concern that is affecting many, many people. It's called the control of others. How do I find freedom from un? healthy control of other people. The Bible is full of people attempting to control other people and events for what they believed to be for their own best interests. For instance, David's son Amnon was enamored. He was captivated with his half-sister Tamar's beauty. He longed to have sexual relationship with her. His desire was so strong that he actually made himself miserable thinking about it. His crafty cousin Jonadab gave him the idea of faking himself sick and then asking his father David to send Tamar to his bedroom to take care of him. Well, Amnon used this control tactic of faking sickness and <clears throat> Tamar came, came to take care of him. Amnon took hold of her and told her to lay with him, another control tactic. She refused, so Amnon used his physical strength, another control tactic, to get her to have sexual relationships with him. After the act, the Bible says Amnon hated her, another control tactic, and told her to go away, to separate from him, another control tactic. Well, I think that you're probably getting the idea, getting the picture. People will carry all kinds of attitudes They'll do all kinds of things to control situations and other people to get what they think they want or what they need. And of course, you can agree with me, I'm sure, it causes incredible pain and misery. Not only for the person who's trying to control, but for those who are the victims. Please understand, in the time now that I spend in God's Word to actually give you some some ways of actually being freed from unhealthy control, your unhealthy control of others. Please understand here that I am not talking about innocent individuals who are doing their best to protect themselves from predators, from men and women who are out to do them harm. No, what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about everyday situations. I'm talking about everyday situations where it seems like someone is not doing something or acting like I think they should. And in very unhealthy ways, I go about to control them and make them change to fit my expectations. That's what I want to address today. If you are recognizing in your own life that you have used or are using things like shaming and blaming, laying guilt trips, anger, silent treatments, bribery or flattery. What I mean by that is offering something nice to induce someone to do what you want them to do. If you've used or are using these in your life and you are desiring to be free from those control tactics, I can tell you from personal experience You can be free, dear friend, from this burden of expecting and manipulating other people to say or do what you think that they should say or do. I would direct your attention now to a Bible text found in Ephesians chapter 4. If you've got your Bibles, please turn there right now. If not, write this down so that you can contemplate it. Ephesians chapter 4, I believe, gives us a little insight into where a person can begin if they truly want to be freed from unhealthy control of other people. Ephesians chapter 4, 
I'm looking at verses 29 through 32. From this, I'll be giving you some insights into being freed from unhealthy control. Ephesians 4, chapter 29 says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good for the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace to the hearers. You know, so much control of other people comes from what we're saying. And if I'm going to be freed from controlling others with my mouth, I've got to get even more focused on what I'm thinking. Because Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 says, out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of my thought life, come my thoughts, come my actions, come my words. And so, dear friends, first step, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Well, if someone has hurt you, if it appears that if someone is trying to take advantage of you, if someone is not acting as you expected like you thought they should, here's some more insights. I'm going to read now Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32, all the way through. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness and wrath control tactics. And anger control tactic. And clamor, that's crying and carrying on to get your way. And evil speaking, control tactic, be put away from you with all malice. Malice is the intent to do harm, another control tactic. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I love that last verse, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If someone is not acting as you expected, like you thought they should, here's number one. Ask God to give you his divine forgiveness for those individuals who have been using control tactics on you. What? Ask God to give you forgiveness for the ones who are using control tactics on you? Ask him to give you compassion for their souls the same compassion that Jesus had when he said to those who hung him on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, why would it be so important for me to actually ask God to give me forgiveness for those who are trying to control me? Well, here's the reason why. Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Here in Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, we see a very, very important insight. Mark 11, chapter 24 and 25. Very important. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, Forgive if you have aught, anything against someone else, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. I believe, dear friends, that the first key to actually experiencing victory over unhealthy control of others is actually to be forgiving and tender-hearted towards those who are trying to control us. In other words, be able to relate to other people with a clean conscience where I'm not holding something, an unhealthy thought, an unhealthy idea about others who are controlling me in my heart. Do you know why? Because we've got this get-even attitude. Well, someone is doing it to me, so it gives me the right to do it to somebody else. No, 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 that's not the way Jesus works. That's not the way Jesus was. 
Lord, give us, Lord, give us forgiveness for those who are trying to control us. Let them see something different in our life so that not only can they see there's a different, a better way, but I can have a clean conscience. I can be at peace. Well, now remember, please understand and remember here that I am not talking about a dangerous relationship. If you're an individual who's who's being stalked right now, an individual who is being taken advantage of by a, a bigger person, a stronger person, an older person. I'm not talking about here where you're doing your best to protect yourself from an abusive predator, from a man or a woman who, like Amnon, is out to do you physical harm. No, I'm talking here about everyday situations, everyday situations where someone is controlling someone else. Well, number two is this. Ask God to give you a repentant heart and forgiveness for holding unkind thoughts towards the ones who did not do what you thought they would or they should. Those who didn't do what you wanted them to do. Ask God to give you the gift of forgiveness I'm going now to Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Again, extremely important. Now we're talking about asking God to give you forgiveness for those, for yourself, excuse me, forgiveness for yourself. And you're controlling others in an unhealthy way. Verse 31, talking about Jesus, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Jesus wants to give each one of us repentance, a turning away from our unhealthy ways and forgiveness of sins. Go to him, dear friend. Go to him with your heart open and say, dear God, please forgive me for my unhealthy efforts to control other people. Number three, ask God to subdue your heart and help you see each situation as he sees it. Ask the Lord to let you see the person that you're interacting with, that you're trying to control, you're trying to change. You're trying to make them the way you want them to be. Ask the Lord to actually let you see that person as he sees them. Rather than what you want them to be. You know, in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, I love what it says about God. Romans chapter 4, verse 17, here talking about Abraham, God talking about Abraham and Sarah, telling them that they were going to have a child. Um, and Abraham, of course, being 100 years old, Abraham being 100 years old and Sarah being 90 years old, of course, they were looking and saying, whoa, this is really something. But God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. God seeing the situation as what he can make it rather than what outward circumstances look like. Another one, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For us to be able to actually ask God, God, show me, give me the ability to see that person, that person who may be doing things that I don't like, to see them as you see them, see them as what they can become through Christ rather than what they are right now or what they were. Here's another one, the Apostle Paul talking in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Paul says, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. We don't look at men after the flesh the way they are. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. They were with Jesus. They saw Jesus. The, the, the apostles did. They were with him. They saw him as a man. But Paul says, I don't see him that way anymore. The Apostle Paul, who persecuted Christians at one time, hated Christ, 
converted, now says, I don't see Christ like I used to see him. And you know, dear friends, when it comes to other people who've hurt us, other people who we feel are taking advantage of us, rather than trying to control them, rather than trying to control them and force them to see things my way, rather to see them as Christ sees them, as his valuable treasure, and treating them with respect and kindness like Christ treated his enemies, even though they don't deserve it. Have a look at this. Matthew chapter 5. This is extremely valuable because we're talking about a mindset. It's the mindset that we allow God to transform that will actually free us from control because the control of other people actually happens. It begins in my thinking. And notice what Jesus says even about our enemies. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. And here he says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Are you following? This is so vital. Instead of, in my mind, condemning and controlling and manipulating, trying to figure out a way to get that person to do what I want them to do, to say what I want them to say, rather pray, even if they're your enemy. Pray. Look for ways to bless. Number three, number four, surrender all shaming, Surrender all blaming. Surrender all laying guilt trips and anger. Surrender those silent treatments. Surrender that bribery and flattery, doing things, nice things for others to try and manipulate them, to get them to do nice things for you. Surrender anything else the Lord convicts your heart that you've been using to control other people in an unhealthy way. Replace those unhealthy control measures with thankfulness and kindness and supportiveness. Remember Ephesians chapter 4, 32. Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Go with me to 2 Timothy 2, verse 24 through 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. Lord, I'm trusting that whoever's listening to this right now, that you would be breaking through to their heart and leading them to recognize how valuable they are in your sight, that you have their best interest in mind, and they don't have to control anyone anymore in an unhealthy way. They can actually be gentle and kind and let you do a work for the control ease. 2 Timothy 2. 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, in meekness instructing those who oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, Notice who gives them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's God's work. It's not ours. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Dear friends, it's safe. It's okay to be a servant of the Lord and actually treat people with kindness and respect. Yes, you can still communicate your desires in a kind, gentle way. You can still communicate what you'd like to see happen. You can still communicate to those individuals that there, you believe there's a better way. But as far as manipulating and coercing and arguing and giving them the silent treatment and, and bribing, you can let go of those things. You can replace them with kindness and tenderness and thankfulness to God. 
Here it is, number six. Whenever a person comes to mind, a person that you'd like to change, a person you'd like to control, a person who li you'd like to make them do things your way, when they come into your mind, immediately turn to God in prayer, thanking Him for infusing your heart with His forgiveness and love for the one who disappointed you, for the one you'd like to see changed, for the one who's taken advantage of you, asking the Lord to bless that person only as He can. Again, from Matthew 5, 45, 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that may, you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Number seven, engage your mind, and this is a big one, this is practice, practice, practice. Engage your mind with the blessings that you have and memorize Bible words, Bible texts, that remind you of what James chapter 3, verse 17 says. James chapter 3, verse 17. Here we read, But the wisdom... Oh, let me, let me read before that, if you don't mind. James chapter 3, verses 14. 14 through 17. Here is the opposite of what we want to have. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, do not glo gloat or glory, do not boast, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And I might add, a lot of control, a lot of controlling, unhealthy control. But verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, easily approached, easily asked for help full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. To practice, dear friends, over and over and over again, every time the idea that you want to control someone, the idea, this disgusting idea that that they're doing something you don't want. Every time one of those ideas enter your mind, engage your mind instead with blessings. Talk to God with thankfulness about all the blessings he's given you. Memorize Bible text. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Ephesians 4. 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Settle in your mind, practice over and over and over again that you will not harbor, you will not entertain uh, an unhealthy, ugly, controlling idea about making someone else do something that you want them to do. Let God's word melt your heart. And most of all, dear friends, the only way this freedom from controlling others can happen is by a Bible text found in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, along with what we've just covered. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And there it says, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, God's character, through the life of Christ, by beholding, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The only way that a person can truly cooperate with God's work to actually be freed from unhealthy control of other people is to actually take the time to behold Christ and his ways of responding even to his enemies Behold Christ's response to the men and women 
who didn't understand him, who tried to take advantage of him, who abused him. Look at Christ's life, examine his life, think about his life, and understand by doing that you are actually putting yourself into a position, putting yourself into a position where the Holy Spirit of God can actually bring you liberty from those unhealthy control efforts that you make in your mind and act in your life like Amnon did with Tamar. You can be free, dear friends. You and I can be more like Jesus. That's the high calling. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. God's character. Hereby we know that we're in him. He that says he abides in him, he that says he abides in Christ, ought himself also so to walk, even as Jesus walked. And dear friends, dear friends, as someone practices, as you practice, as I practice, walking like Jesus, thinking his thoughts, responding to people his way, thinking nothing but godly, positive, hope-filled, honest and true thoughts about other people. The Spirit of God will free us, free us from the unhealthy control habits that we have, controlling other people and their ways of doing things. I hope this is helpful for you. Please take time to be in the Word of God, to behold the Master. Ask Him to give you that gift of forgiveness, not only for others who have taken, tried to control you, but the gift of forgiveness for your, un other, your control of other people's lives. Ask him for strength and practice laying aside, replacing the blaming, laying aside the criticizing, laying aside the, the strong silent treatment, laying aside the bribery, laying aside those unhealthy responses to other people to try and make them do what you want them to do, but rather be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. God bless you as you contemplate these thoughts. Through different eyes, you can be free.